Good evening to everyone. Thank you for taking the opportunity to join in tonight with us. Tonight is really, really good. It's just interesting how God, his ways are not our ways. You hear me say that a lot, but truly his ways are not our ways. He does not think like us. And it's just amazing how God can navigate you. And you have to be willing to be led. And then he'll bring you into things that make you just, just make your mind have to change. So tonight, your thinking is going to have to change because God has led us to a place to give us a great understanding about himself. So get your Bible, get your pen and your paper, and let's prepare ourselves to get an understanding. Because like I always say, you know, God... His ways are not our ways. And so tonight, I just want you to listen and just allow God to share with you. Truly, truly, I will say this. Tonight, you will have so many different questions answered. And you'll gain an understanding and be strengthened by this word tonight. Amen. So let's get our Bibles. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 62. Isaiah chapter 62. Isaiah 62. We're just going to read three verses. Three verses. So Isaiah 62, let's pray, and then we'll move into the Word of God. Amen. God, we thank you so much for what you're doing here tonight. God, we ask you that you would step in and allow those that hear God to receive an understanding. God, these are your people. You know, their hearts, their minds, their desires, their concerns, every fear that they have, God, you know it. Do what only you can do, God, and speak to them according to the knowledge of the contents, your knowledge of the contents of their heart. God, let it rain right now in this place. We give you glory and honor in all that you do. We bless you as the true and living God. Right now, in the resurrected name of your Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 62, and we're going to re read three verses, verses 8 through 10. Isaiah 62, 8 through 10. Listen to what it says. The Lord has sworn... By his right hand and by the arm of his strength, surely I will no more give thy corn to be meat for thine enemies. And the sons of the stranger shall not drink thy wine for which thou hast labored. But they that have gathered it shall eat it and praise the Lord. And they that have brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. Go through, go through the gates, prepare you the way of the people. Cast up the highway, gather out the stones, lift up a standard for the people. Amen. This is what I want to talk to you about tonight. The blessing, the blessing of the Lord, the blessing of the Lord. And let me say this to you. Understand this. It's always about timing. Why is timing so critical with God? Because his timing allows his authority to clearly be seen. That's the purpose for prophets, because to give you the Lord's timing for something allows his authority to clearly be seen. And understand, this that I am presenting to you tonight, it's a set time. It's a set time in the kingdom of heaven. And understand the purpose for set times. The purpose for set times is that you may have knowledge Understand, the set time for a particular thing to happen in the kingdom of heaven is to give you knowledge concerning the authority of heaven. And understand, there's a way that the Lord desires for you to have an understanding of his authority. And the purpose for a set time is to give you an understanding that there is nothing, nothing too hard for the Lord or with the Lord, nothing is impossible. That is the purpose of giving you a set time for a specific thing to happen in the kingdom of heaven. It is to give you knowledge that nothing is too hard for the authority of the Lord or for the Lord. So let me give you a few witnesses and then we're going to get into the word. First place I want to go, I want to deal with a set time real quick because this is timing is important here tonight. It's very important. It's very important. First place I want to go is uh, Genesis chapter 18. Listen now, chapter 18. Just laying a foundation here for something good. Listen to what it says. 
It says, verse number four, uh, 13, the Lord says, and the Lord said to Abraham, wherefore, wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, shall I have a surety, bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. So understand, the appointed time or the set time was to give them knowledge. Listen, now, I want you to hear me when I say this to you. Understand, it was to give them the knowledge that nothing was too hard for the Lord, that they would begin to walk and live by that knowledge that had been made manifest to them through seeing the Lord accomplish a particular thing at its set time. I hope you get that. Understand. The reason for giving them the set time was that at its manifestation, that they would begin to walk in the knowledge of the thing that heaven performed at the set time, that they would walk in it and live by the knowledge of his authority. Let me give you another example. Watch, this is good. This is good. I love this. Watch this. Genesis 15. Genesis 15. Watch. Listen. Verse number 13, 14 says, And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that's not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them for 400 years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward they shall come out with great substance. So the exodus, the people exiting at God's appointed time was to give the people knowledge that nothing was too hard for the Lord. They were supposed to take that knowledge and live by it as they wandered through the wilderness, knowing that nothing was too hard for the Lord. Because at the appointed time, he brought them out of Egypt, giving them the knowledge that with him and by his authority, nothing is too hard for him. Last place, last place I'm going to go, last place. I want to make sure you understand this, because when a prophet gives you the Lord's appointed or set time for him to perform a particular thing, the manifestation of that thing is to give you knowledge about his authority. And the knowledge that he desires for you to have concerning his authority, when that thing is manifested at its appointed time, is that nothing is too hard for the Lord. Therefore, he expects you now to move forward, living and walking in the knowledge that he has given you through the manifestation of the thing that he said would happen at that appointed time. Are you following me? Come on, one more place. Watch now. Watch, this is good. This is really good. It's really good. I'm nowhere and I'm, I'm good. Watch this. Jeremiah 29, Jeremiah 29, Jeremiah 29, verse 10. See, it makes sense once you get an understanding. Listen to this. Verse number 10. For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished, I will visit you and perform my good word. Big word. Listen, I will visit you. Circle it. You. Because the set time was for them. It wasn't for the Babylonians. It was for them. He says, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. The purpose of the set time was to give them knowledge. The set time for them to come out of Babylon, it was to give them knowledge that there is nothing too hard for the Lord. And once they came out of Babylon, his expectation was for them. Are you hearing me? Was for them to move forward and walk in and live by the knowledge that nothing is too hard for the Lord. That's the part. He could have just put them in the Babylon. He could have just put them in Egypt and just showed up and brought them out. No, the set time was purposeful. It was to give them a knowledge to live by. Are you understanding? It was to give them a knowledge to live by. When the Lord performs things at an appointed time, it is to give people a knowledge about his authority to live by. Are you understanding? And the purpose is that you would put your confidence in the authority of heaven to prosper you as you move forward, knowing there's no situation or nothing that is impossible for the Lord to prosper you in. Are you hearing me? Watch this. Let's move on. Let's get into the word. Listen now. Listen, I need you to get that. I need you to hear that. Listen to this. Verse number eight. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength. Understand, 
This is about the presence of the Lord in the earth. This is about the presence of the Lord in the earth. And understand, the Lord needs it known. Listen, he needs it known that he has committed to and determined to establish his presence in the earth through deliverance. Hear me. He needs it known that he has committed to and determined to establish his presence in the earth through deliverance. Understand this. When the Lord, let, let, let's, let's get this straight. First thing straight. Let's deal with the right hand. The right hand of the Lord tendeth to establishment. Understand, the right hand of the Lord tendeth to establishment. When the Lord says he's doing things by his right hand, it tendeth to establishment. Let me show it to you. First place I want to take you is let's go to uh, Isaiah chapter 41. 41, you got to follow this. Isaiah 41, look at verse number 10. Fear not, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yes, I will help thee. Yea, here it is. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. The right hand of God tendeth to righteousness. Righteousness tendeth to establishment. So when the Lord swears by his right hand, He's swearing to establish his presence in the earth. Let me give you the second part of Isaiah 54. Watch now. Listen now. Listen. Isaiah 54, verse number 14. Listen. In righteousness shalt thou be established. So the right hand of the Lord tendeth to establishment. Understand. So when he swears by his right hand, he's swearing to establish or he's committing or committed to or determined to establish his presence in the earth. Now, the arm of the Lord, the arm of the Lord tendeth to deliverance. The arm of the Lord is always about deliverance. So when the Lord says he is sworn by his right hand in the arm of his strength, understand that he has determined to establish his presence in the earth through deliverance. So let me give you the right hand of the, I mean, the arm of the Lord. First place we want to go is Exodus chapter 6. Exodus chapter 6. Let's go to Exodus chapter 6. Look at this. Verse number 6. Listen to what it says. Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burden of the Egyptians and I will rid you out of their bondage and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. So arm of the Lord tendeth to is about deliverance. One more place. Uh, John 12, John 12, John 12, John 12, verse 38. Listen to this. Watch, listen to this. I'm going to read 37 too. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him, that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, who spake, Lord, who hath believed our report? And to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? So now understand, the arm of the Lord tendeth to deliverance. And the ministry of Jesus was about deliverance. And through Jesus, the Lord established his presence in the earth through deliverance. The arm of the Lord tendeth to deliverance. So the Lord has committed, listen now, and determined to establish his presence in the earth through deliverance. I need you to hear that. He needs you to know this, that he is committed to and that he has determined to establish his presence in the earth through deliverance. Now understand this, when the Lord establishes where he can be found or he establishes presence, he establishes his presence according to how he desires to be sought out and called upon. Please understand it. God just doesn't just establish himself where he can be found. No, he establishes himself according to how he desires. Hear me, how he desires to be sought out and called upon. The purpose of establishing where you can be found, 
for the Lord, the purpose of him establishing where he can be found is that he may be sought out and called upon. He's just not establishing where he can be found just to establish where he can be found. He's establishing where he can be found according to how he desires. Hear this, how he desires to be sought out and called upon. Let me give you a few witnesses. First place I want to go is to 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 4. Listen now, listen. The Lord established his presence in the earth through Solomon and established where he could be found that men may seek him out and call upon him for his judgment of how things moved in the earth. Understand, the Lord established his presence through Solomon. Listen to me. He established his presence through Solomon because the wisdom he gave Solomon was by the spirit. He gave him his spirit and that spirit had knowledge of how concerning of how the Lord moved or how things in the earth should move. Understand. So he established, he wanted people to seek him out, to call upon him on how things in the earth that he created should move. Let me show it to you. First thing, 1 Kings 4, 34, listen. And there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all kings of the earth. So the Lord gave Solomon the wisdom that they would seek him out and call upon him according to the wisdom that God had given him. And here was his wisdom. He spake 3,000 proverbs and his songs were 1,005. Here it is. He spake of trees from the cedar tree. He spake about how things in the earth should move. Understand. So God establishes his presence according to how he desires to be sought out. In first King, in first Samuel nine, he, he establishes his presence through Samuel that men may seek him out and call upon him for judgment concerning the issues of life. That all, when he established his presence through Solomon, the purpose was that men may seek out the Lord and call upon him for his judgment concerning the issues of life. When the people came to Saul, I mean to Samuel, they came seeking the judgment of heaven concerning the issues of life. When Saul came to him seeking him, Saul came to him seeking him concerning the issues of life. Understand, when the Lord establishes where he can be found, he establishes himself according to how he desires to be sought out and called upon. The last witness is this. The last witness is Abraham. Let's go to Abraham. Watch now. It's so subtle, but it's, it's good. When the Lord, listen to what the Lord says. Verse 17. And the Lord says, shall I hide from Abraham the thing which I do? See that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. Listen to this, to do justice and judgment. I'm not hiding from him what I am doing, that he may execute the justice and the judgment of the Lord. And what the Lord, when the Lord established his presence with Abraham, it was because he desired to be sought out and called upon for his judgment concerning what he was doing in the earth. The Lord showed Abraham what he was doing in the earth. He establishes where he can be found through Abraham for the purpose. He's showing you exactly how he desires to be sought out and called upon because he's showing Abraham what he is doing in the earth. So by his spirit abiding with Abraham, he is establishing where he can be found for the purpose of being sought out and called upon 
for what he is doing in the earth. Let me make this real clear so you get this. God does not just establish where he can be found just to establish where he can be found. There's a purpose. And that purpose is how he desires to be sought out and called upon is how he establishes where he can be found. So if he establishes, if he shows Abraham what he is doing in the earth, that's what he desires to be sought out and called upon for. If he gives Solomon the wisdom and understanding of how things move in the earth, that's what he desires to be sought out and called upon for. If he gives Samuel an understanding of what he is doing in the lives of people, that's what he desires to be sought out and called upon for. Understand, he establishes where he can be found according to how he desires to be sought out and called upon. Somebody say amen. Come on, let's keep going. Watch now, watch now. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen now, listen. The Lord says this. He says, surely, surely I will no more give thy corn to be meat for thine enemies. And the sons of the stranger shall not drink thy wine for which thou hast labored. Understand this. This is about deliverance. Please understand. This is about deliverance. And this will be done, remember, by the arm of the Lord. All of these things are about the Lord establishing where he can be found through deliverance. This is about deliverance, and this will be done by the arm of the Lord. Understand this. Timing, once again, once again, timing. Listen to this. When increase happens in the Lord's timing, write this down. When it happens in his timing and by his hand, his purpose is to give you knowledge of his authority. Please understand, when increase happens in the Lord's timing and by his hand, the purpose is to give you knowledge of his authority that you may put your confidence in the authority of heaven to prosper you. Hear me now. Listen to what I'm saying to you. When the Lord increases you, his purpose is for you to live by the knowledge that he gives you through increasing you. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? I'm going to say it again. When the Lord increases you, his expectation is that you live by the knowledge that he gives you through increasing you. God's ways are not our ways. Neither are his thoughts our thoughts. We don't think about things like God. We're more wrapped up in increase than we are in knowledge. Are you understanding? Because understand, when he increases you, increase is the beginning of a new life. Are you understanding? One that you now live by the knowledge of what the authority of heaven has authority over, what heaven has authority over, and you now begin to live by that authority. Uh, that knowledge of that authority. Are you understanding? Watch now. Let me give you a few witnesses. I'm going to say it again. I don't want you to miss it. Watch. When God increases you, it is the beginning of a new life. And now you begin. It's not about the increase. It's about the knowledge. And he's increasing you to give you knowledge to live by. Are you hearing me? Giving you knowledge to live by. And now you live by the knowledge of what heaven has authority over. This is what makes you peculiar. So when the Lord increases you in his timing and by his hand, he's giving you knowledge to live by. The increase of heaven in heaven's time and by its hand is the beginning of a new life. Listen, if, watch. It's one that you begin to live by the knowledge of what heaven has authority over and that the authority abides with you. Let me give you a few witnesses. First thing, watch now, watch. Joel chapter two, Joel chapter two, Joel chapter two. 
Come on, we're going to get good in this. We're going to get good. We're going to get good. Joel chapter 2. Listen to this. Watch. Joel chapter 2. Verse 26. Listen, listen. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Listen, and you shall know, there's the knowledge, that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord and there is none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. So understand, the Lord's expectation. Listen to how God is talking about the increase. Are you hearing me? He has, he's no way, shape, or form focusing on the increase. He's focusing on what he desires the increase to do in your life. And what he purposes for the increase to do in your life is to give you knowledge to live by, to put your confidence in, that now you live by and walk in the knowledge of what heaven has authority over and that it abides with you. Are you understanding what increase is all about is giving you a new level of faith through knowledge. Your faith is only as strong as your knowledge is. So when he increases you, he's giving you another level of faith through the knowledge you obtain through seeing his authority. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? So when he increases, listen, he says, you shall know or you shall have the knowledge that I am in your midst, that I abide with you and that I am the Lord, that there is none else that has authority like me. So this is what he desires for you now to begin to live your life by. This level of faith according to the knowledge that he has given you about himself. Let me give you another witness. Let me give you another witness. Watch that. Another witness. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. Watch this. Verse number 8. Listen now. Listen. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and all that thou shouldest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Understand, the purpose of the increase is to give them knowledge to live by. The increase is to give them knowledge of his authority that they, may, that they now may begin to live by the knowledge of of the authority of heaven and walk in it and live by it. When the Lord increases you, he's giving knowledge. And the knowledge, his expectation is for you to live by that knowledge. That knowledge is you walking and living in the authority that has been made manifest to you. Don't focus on the increase. Focus on the authority. Authority. Because the authority is what is important. The increase allows you to see the authority. The purpose is that you may given the knowledge, may be given the knowledge of the authority and now begin to walk in it and live by it. Last place. This is a good one. I like this. You can see it clear. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles 32. Second Chronicles 32. Second Chronicles 32. Listen to this now. Listen. Listen to Hezekiah. Hezekiah says this, verse 7 and 8. Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid, nor be dismayed. For the king of Assyria, nor with all the multitude that is with him. For there be more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh. But with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah. Hezekiah's confidence was in the authority of heaven that abided with him. The confidence he got it from seeing the Lord increase him because the purpose of increase was to give him the knowledge of the authority of heaven and that there was nothing too hard for the Lord. Hence, the Lord's expectation was for Hezekiah. Remember, I said this to you, when the Lord increases you, it is the beginning of a new life. And in this life, you begin to live by the knowledge of the authority of heaven. You begin to walk in it and live by it, knowing that there is none else that has authority like the Lord. 
That's the purpose of the increase is to give you the knowledge you need to live in the new life that heaven is creating for you as it increases you. Somebody say amen. Amen. Come on, let's go back. Watch this now. Watch. Watch. This is to the remnant now. This word is to the remnant. Listen, this word is to the remnant. The Lord has sworn by his, surely I will no more give thy corn to be meat for thine enemies and the sons of the stranger shall not drink thy wine for which thou hast labored. This is to the remnant. This is that you may know the Lord as a redeemer and as a deliverer. Understand, this is that you may know the Lord as a redeemer and a deliverer. And this will happen by the arm of the Lord. And listen to the word of the Lord. The Lord says this season, verse number eight is a season. This season in your life has come to an end. He says, no longer will I cause you to serve men through borrowing. Understand the big word here. I'm going to say this again. He says, no longer will I cause you, he says, to serve men through borrowing. Understand, the big word is this, I will, meaning that the Lord is with you, or saying to the remnant, I am with you to deliver you. Your word for this season is, I am with you to deliver you. Understand, he says, no longer. Will I cause you to serve men through borrowing? Understand this. When increase happens in the Lord's timing, the Lord increases you to deliver you from serving men through borrowing. I'm going to say this again. When the Lord increases you in his timing and by his hand, he increases you to deliver you. The deliverance happens through the increase. He increases you to deliver you from serving men through borrowing. Let me give you some witnesses. First place I want to go is Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. I want you to see this. Watch now. Watch. Watch. Verse 12. Listen to what verse 12 says. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure to heaven to give the reins of your land in his season. Listen, to bless all the work of your hand. Here it is. He's, to, and thou shalt lend unto many nations and thou shalt not borrow. Understand, because the Bible is clear in Proverbs 22 and seven, that the borrower is a servant to the lender. So it does the Lord no good to increase you and you're still borrowing. Because in he has left you in the house of servants. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? It does the Lord no good to increase you because he then has left you in the house of servants. But when he increases you, his purpose for increasing you is deliverance. It's to redeem you. It is to deliver you from serving men through borrowing. Let me give you one more witness. Let me give you another couple more witnesses. Let's go to Deuteronomy 15. Deuteronomy 15. Watch now. Deuteronomy 15. Deuteronomy 15. I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to give you some real good understanding in a minute. Verse number six. Listen to verse number six. For the Lord thy God, listen, for the Lord thy God blesses thee as he promised thee. And thou shalt. Now listen, I need you to hear this. Listen to the Lord's purpose. Okay, put your heart on God's purpose, not the foolishness that you're hearing. Listen to God's purpose. When the Lord increases you, are you hearing me? As long as you, as long as people increase themselves, they can never be delivered from serving men through borrowing. They don't have that kind of authority. Even the richest people in the world borrow for fear of putting all of their money at risk and losing it. There's not a one person on earth that is not a servant through borrowing. Are you hearing me? But when the Lord increases you, he delivers you and redeems you 
from the house of servants from serving men through borrowing. In Egypt, they were bondmen. They were people that served for no wages. But when you serve, and when you are borrowing, you are a servant. So when the Lord delivers you, when he increases you, here's where he delivers you from. He puts it in the scripture. He's t wait, wait. They already came out of Egypt. So watch. He delivered them from the house of bondmen. Now he's having a completely different conversation with them. And now he's telling them, okay, listen, now I'm going to deliver you from being a servant to men through borrowing. Here's the purpose of increasing you. I'm redeeming you and delivering you again. This time, I'm just delivering you and redeeming you from serving men through borrowing. Are you understanding? Listen to Deuteronomy 15 and 6. For the Lord thy God blesses thee as he promised thee, and thou shalt. Listen. Listen to how he, the blessing of the Lord is the increase of the Lord. But listen to how the Lord talks about the increase. He doesn't talk. Watch. This is the only part of life that matters to him. Watch. Watch. In increasing you. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and, and thou shalt not borrow. Thou shalt reign over many nations, and they shall not reign over thee. The whole purpose of deliver of increase from the Lord is deliverance. It is to deliver you from serving men through borrowing. Let me give you one more witness. Let me give you one more witness. Let me give you one more witness. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60. Watch this. Watch this. Listen to verse number. Now, if you know Isaiah 60, the whole chapter is increased. But listen to verse number six. It's about the Lord increasing the people. Listen to verse 16. Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles. Listen. And thou shalt suck the breast of kings. So he's going to make kings give them wealth. Watch. And you shall know that I, the Lord, here it is, am thy savior and thy redeemer. So listen. The purpose of increasing them was to redeem them and to deliver them from serving men through borrowing. Please understand the purpose for increasing them. Hear this. Those that are increased by the Lord speak differently about the increase because they speak about the redemption and the deliverance of the increase. They're not talking to you about, look at my big house, look at my nice car. They're not talking about that. They are talking about the redemption and the deliverance of the increase by the hand of the Lord. Listen to the Lord. He says, you shall know that I, the Lord, am your Savior and your Redeemer, because this is what's important about the increase. It's not about the increase. It's about the knowledge of the Lord. And those that are increased by the Lord, they're not going to be talking about the increase. They're going to be talking about being redeemed, and they're going to be talking about being delivered. The purpose of increasing you is to deliver you and to redeem you and to establish that the presence of the Lord is with you and where the Lord can be found. Somebody say amen. I'm going to say this again. Listen now. Listen. You don't hear me talking about increase the way that everyone else talks about increase because that's not what is important. The Lord makes it very clear what's important about the increase. What's important about the increase is the redemption and the deliverance or the salvation. And the reason he delivers you and redeem you is that you can serve him in the priesthood. The purpose of redeeming you or delivering you is that you can serve him in the priesthood. Understand, the increase becomes what makes it possible to serve in the priesthood because the increase gives you the deliverance and the liberty that is necessary to serve in the priesthood. Because if the Lord increases you, listen, if the Lord increases you, but he does not deliver you, then you're serving two masters. 
And no man can serve two masters, for either he will love one and hate the other. But if he increases you and deliver you, then you are beholden only to him and you can serve him with all of your heart and with all of your soul in the priesthood. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? Come on, watch this. Let's keep going. Watch now. Watch, 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 watch. He says this. He says, listen. So understand, the purpose of that is that you may know that you may know the Lord is a deliverer and to be sure of his authority. Somebody write down the word sure. The purpose of this increase is that you may know him as a deliverer, as a redeemer, and be sure of his authority, and that you would begin to live and walk in your knowledge of the authority of heaven. Listen to this. We're going to keep going. Watch now. But they that have gathered it shall eat it and praise the Lord, and they that have brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. Listen to this. Once again, this is about deliverance. This is that you may know the Lord as a redeemer and as a deliverer. And understand, this will happen by the arm of the Lord. This will not happen by the hands of men. This will happen by the arm of the Lord. Remember, the purpose of incre the increase of heaven or the Lord increasing you, the purpose of the increase, understand, is to give you knowledge about the authority of heaven. Please understand that. And this will happen by the arm of the Lord. And the Lord, this is for understanding. The Lord says this, I need you to understand. Circle the word but. Because it's contrary, but it requires understanding. So he says, I need you to understand the redemption and the deliverance that I have ordained for your life. This is to the remnant. I need you to understand the redemption and the deliverance that I have ordained for your life. And the Lord makes it clear. Listen to what he says. This is how I am going to redeem you or deliver you. I am going to have men serve you in bringing you your increase in the place in Las Vegas, Henderson, that I have chosen to establish where I can be found. This is the place where you will receive from the Lord. But listen to what he says. Here's how your deliverance is going to happen. I am going to have men bring you your increase. And understand this, I'm going to have them serve you. Hear this, the reward for serving God is God causes men to serve you. And in causing them to serve you, he commands them to serve you in bringing you your increase. That in them bringing it to you, you are delivered from serving men through borrowing. Understand this, the deliverance the deliverance is in the Lord commanding that your increase be brought to you. That's where the deliverance abides. How will he deliver you? He delivers you through commanding men to serve you through bringing you your increase. When increase happens in the Lord's timing, hear this, when it happens in his timing and by his hand, he commands men to bring you your increase, that in them bringing it to you, in him commanding them to bring it to you, he delivers you from serving men through borrowing. The deliverance and the redemption is in him commanding them to bring you your increase. Let me give you a few witnesses. Watch now. Watch. Watch. First place I want to go is Isaiah 49. Watch. And I'm, I'm going to take you to a couple of good places. Watch now. Listen. Listen now. Watch. Understand. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible to serve the Lord if you are not delivered from borrowing. Listen to what he says. Listen. And he delivers you through commanding. Remember, the increase of heaven is commanded. What is the purpose of commanding it? The purpose of commanding it is that you are set free 
from serving men through borrowing. His what? He causes men to serve you through commanding them to bring you your increase, that in them bringing it to you, you are delivered from serving them through borrowing. Watch. 49, 3, 23. And king shall be, you know what? I, I like this, but I'm going to go, watch. I'm, 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 I'm still going to use it, but I'm going to use this one even better. Watch this. Genesis chapter 20. Because it's clear. Watch this. But here's the question. Just see it. And then you do your own you do, you do your own work. Watch now. Because it's not just here to be here. And you're going to find it in the word of God several more times. Because it establishes God's way of doing things. God's way are not our ways. Listen to this. So the king, so God comes to the king at night. And so when he comes to the king, listen to what he says. Genesis 20. He says, now therefore, verse 7, restore the man his wife, for he's a prophet. He shall pray for you, and you shall live. If thou restore her not, then thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are dying. Listen to verse 8. Therefore, Abimelech rose early in the morning, and he called Abraham. And he called all his servants and told these things in their ears, and the men were so afraid. Verse 9. Then Abimelech called Abraham. Listen to what he does. Verse 14. Abimelech took sheep, oxen, men servants, women servants, and gave them unto Abraham and restored them to Sarah's wife. Watch. And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before you, the well where it pleases thee. And unto Sarah he said, I've given thy brother a thousand pieces of silver. Behold, he is to thee, covering the eyes unto all that are, with, that are with thee. Wait a minute. God goes to the king, commands the king to give to Abraham. What was the purpose? He was delivering him from the house of servants, from serving men through borrowing, by commanding him to serve Abraham through bringing him his authority. I mean, bringing him his increase. Abraham was sitting by himself. The king came to him, came and got him, and brought him increase. That's God's way. Wait, we're going to keep going. Let's keep going. Watch this. Watch this. Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49. Watch, I'm going to give you a bunch of witnesses. And I'm going to show you something you heard in the church your whole life. You just didn't realize it. Isaiah 49, 23. And kings shall be your nursing fathers. And their queens, thy nursing mothers. Listen, they shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth and lick up the dust of thy feet. And you shall know, have knowledge, that I am the Lord. For they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. So understand, the kings are going to bring you your increase at the commandment of the Lord. For what purpose? Because when increase happens in the Lord's timing, hear this, and I'm going to show it to you. When increase happens in the Lord's timing, he commands men to bring you your increase. The deliverance is in him commanding them to bring you your increase. He delivers you or redeems you from serving men or from the house of servants through borrowing. That's how he does it. That's how the Lord does it. He f delivers you from serving men through borrowing, through causing them to serve you and commanding them to bring you your increase and delivering you from the house of servants through borrowing. Let me give you another witness. Isaiah chapter 60. It's here. Watch. You have to listen to it. 11 and 12. Watch. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night. That men may bring unto thee. Wait a minute. That men may bring unto thee. Wait a minute. That men may bring unto thee the wealth of the Gentiles and that their kings may be brought. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee. So understand, how are they to serve you? In bringing you their wealth. What is the purpose of them bringing you your their wealth? The purpose in them bringing you your wealth is to redeem you and to deliver you from serving men through borrowing that the Lord in delivering you may cause you to serve him in the priesthood free from being a servant to men that now men can receive the words that leave your mouth in the name of the Lord with confidence. It does the Lord no good to increase you and leave you a servant. Then no one can receive the words that leave your mouth in the name of the Lord with confidence. But when he redeems you and delivers you, 
He get, he delivers you that you may serve him in the priesthood. And that men now, through seeing the redemption and the deliverance, may receive the words that leave your mouth in the name of the Lord with confidence. If men never see the Lord deliver you, they cannot with confidence receive the words that leave your mouth in his name. As long as you continue to increase yourself by your hand, men will be skeptical of the words that leave your mouth in the name of the Lord. But when the Lord redeems you and when he delivers you, he delivers you and puts you in the priesthood. And because you've been delivered by his authority, now he gives you gives people confidence to receive the words that leave your mouth in the name of the Lord with confidence. Watch, because in the deliverance is authority and the authority justifies and establishes and a justified and established servant's words in the name of the Lord are received with confidence. If there is no authority, there is no justification. If there is no authority, there is no establishment. If there is no authority, there is no confidence. If there is no confidence, then people can't surely receive the words that leave your mouth in the name of the Lord. What did Peter say? Peter says, he says, where shall we go? For we know that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, and thou has the words of life. But what gave him the confidence to receive the words? The authority that was manifest in his life that justified him and established him to cause him to receive the words that left his mouth in the name of the Lord with confidence. I'm going to say this to you again. When increase happens in the Lord's timing and by his hand, big word is hand, okay? When it happens in his timing and by his hand, understand, the purpose is to deliver you from serving men through borrowing. Let me give you a couple more witnesses. I'm going to give you the famous witness, the one that you know because you've been in church your whole life. I grew up in church. You grew up in church, right? But you just didn't realize what you were hearing. Watch, because you know the only time you hear this is during offering time, when they want you to give up your money. They give you the scripture, but they don't give you an understanding. Watch this. Luke 6, 38. Now watch. What color are these words? They're red. Who's doing the talking? The prophet. What is he sharing? He is sharing a secret concerning the ways of the kingdom of heaven. Listen to what he says. Watch this. Watch this. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Okay, well, listen to what he says. Shall men give into your bosom? To, wait, for somebody to put something in your bosom. Okay, good measure is a godly measure. It's a godly measure. It's a measure that can only come from God. And all heavenly increase is commanded. Go through your scriptures. All heavenly increase is commanded. So for men to give you a godly measure, he commands it. And Jesus is telling you that godly increase is commanded, that men give it to you, that in them giving it to you, the Lord redeems you and delivers you from the house of servants or serving men through borrowing. Because when the Lord increases you, his purpose is to deliver you from serving men through borrowing. That's why he puts in the scripture, I need you to be a lender and not a borrower. Because if you are a borrower, it's impossible for me to accomplish my purpose in the earth through you. But I deliver you to establish that I'm with you to accomplish my purpose in the earth through you. Are you getting it? Watch, last witness. I want to make sure you get this because godly measure or godly increase is commanded. And then God commands men to serve you, to serve you. Are you hearing me? To serve you through bringing you your increase, to bringing you your increase that the, that the deliverance is in him commanding them to bring it to you, that he would deliver you or redeem you from serving man through borrowing. Watch this. Let me show you this last one. First Kings chapter four. First Kings chapter four. Watch. I know you probably don't go here, but it's here. It's here. First Kings chapter four. 
First Kings chapter four. Watch. This is very, this is a good one. First Kings chapter four. Watch. See, listen to this. Verse 21. Now listen, listen, watch. It's here purposefully because God is glorified in it. Listen. And Solomon reigned over all kingdoms from the river unto the land of the Philistines unto the border of Egypt. Listen, they brought presents and served Solomon all the days of his life. How did they serve him? They served him to bringing him increase. Watch. Why? So that he would not abide in the house of servants through borrowing, that the Lord may accomplish his pr purpose in the earth through Solomon by redeeming and delivering him from the house of servants. Are you understanding? When the Lord increases you, he commands men to bring you your increase. For what purpose? That he, through the commandment, may deliver you. The deliverance is in the commandment. Are you hearing me? The deliverance is in the commandment. The increase allows you to be set free, but the deliverance is in the commandment. Hence, the servant gets to see the authority of heaven. Now, remember what I told you, when the Lord increases you, it's the beginning of a new life. And in this life, you begin to live by your knowledge of the authority of heaven and put your confidence in it to prosper you. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? Come on, let's keep going. Watch this now. Watch, let's keep going. This says, go through, go through the gates. So now listen to this. Understand, this is about deliverance. And this is that you may know the Lord as a deliverer and a redeemer. And understand, this is to the remnant. The Lord says this. It's time for you to enter in to the place that I have chosen to deliver you, to redeem you, and to receive from the Lord. Listen now. You've got to listen to me carefully. The Lord said, the time has come for you to enter into the place where I will redeem you, where I will deliver you, and to receive from the Lord. Let me say this to you. Understand this, and this is good. When you wait on the Lord to increase you, or increase happens in the Lord's timing. You know what? And I passed something by. Let me go back. Let me go back. I passed something by because I missed this. I got to deal with praise the Lord. Let me deal with praise the Lord. And then I'll go to that. But listen to this. The next thing he says in here is praise the Lord. Let me say this to you because this is great. When the Lord increases you, he puts in your mouth how he desires for you to talk about him. I'm going to say this again. God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And I'm going to show it to you. When the Lord increases you, he puts in your mouth how he desires for you to talk about him. Every praise that the Lord creates or every praise that is pleasing to the Lord is one that he has created. You don't just choose the praise. You just don't give him any praise and it's acceptable. No, every praise that is pleasing. What does the Bible say in Revelation chapter four? It says all things were made by thee and for thee and for thy pleasure were they created. All things. So are you understanding all things? So now understand when the Lord increases you, when he increases you, he puts in your mouth how he desires for you to talk about him. And hear this, what he desires, he does not desire for you to praise him for the increase. That's not what he's looking for. He desires that you praise him for redeeming you and for delivering you. The praise about, uh-uh, understand this. He's not looking for the praise about the increase. Why not? Because the increase is serving a purpose. Understand, the increase is serving a purpose. It's not about the increase. 
It's about what the increase allows the Lord to do in your life. And it's what the increase allows him to do in your life that he desires to be praised for. When the Lord increases you, he desires to be praised as a redeemer and as a deliverer. He doesn't want to be praised as someone that increases you. He desires to be praised as a redeemer and as a deliverer. Let me give you some witnesses. Let me show it to you. Let me show it to you. Let me show it to you. Watch this. Let me show it to you. First place I want to go is, uh, let's go to Psalms 107. Psalms 107. 107. You know it, but you just never thought about it. Psalms 107. Watch this. Psalms 107. Listen to this. Psalms 107 and 2. Listen to it now. Watch. It says, let the redeemed, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom the Lord hath redeemed from the enemy. So now understand, the Lord desires, his, his purpose for redeeming you or delivering you is to be praised for redeeming you and delivering you. The Lord's not looking to be praised about the increase. The Lord is looking to be praised for the redemption and for the deliverance. Those are truly increased by the Lord. I'm going to say this again. They will never talk to you about the increase. They will talk about you, to you about the redemption and the deliverance of the increase. They'll talk about the liberty of the increase. They'll talk about the Lord of the increase. Remember what Jesus says. Listen to how Jesus says. He says, the harvest truly is plenteous. Did he not? He says, but the laborers are few. Listen to his speech. He says, let us pray to the Lord of the harvest. Correct. Because what is most important isn't the harvest. What's most important is the Lord. And when the Lord increases you, what he desires to be praised for is not the increase, but what he increasing you allows him to accomplish in your life. He desires to be praised for being a deliverer and for giving you salvation or deliverance. Salvation is the Lord delivering you from serving men through borrowing, through increasing you. Are you understanding that you would be holding to no man, but walk in the liberty of the Lord and serve him in the priesthood? That's the purpose of increase. Are you understanding? Go back to Exodus 19. It said, if you will obey my voice and keep my covenant, he says, then shall you be a peculiar treasure unto me for all the earth is mine. Listen to what he says. And you shall be unto me a pre, a kingdom of priests. I'm only delivering you that you may serve in the priesthood. So those that are delivered would praise me for delivering them. Let me give you another witness. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. First, um, Isaiah chapter 60. Listen to this. Watch. Listen. Listen. Watch. Verse 18. Listen to verse 18. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting no destruction within thy borders. Listen to this. But your walls, but thou shalt call thy walls salvation. And thou shalt call thy gates praise. So watch, because in increasing you, he gives you salvation. What he wants for increasing you is you praising him for redeeming you or giving you deliverance. Are you understanding? This is how heaven thinks about increase. When you truly run into someone that has been increased by the Lord, they don't want to talk about the increase. They want to talk about the deliverance or the redemption of the increase or the Lord of the increase. But the praise that the Lord expects when he increases you, he does not want you to praise him for the increase. What did I tell you? And what have I been telling you for weeks now? It's not about the increase. 
It's about the knowledge that the increase allows you to obtain about the Lord. The increase allows you to know him as a redeemer and a deliverer. Therefore, based on that knowledge, that is what he desires for you to praise him for. Because the increase allows you to obtain the knowledge. The increase is how God created the praise. Because the increase gives you the knowledge that he is a redeemer and a deliverer. Therefore, you praise him according to the knowledge of the increase. He does not want to be praised for the increase. He wants to be praised as a deliverer and a redeemer. Listen, because if you praise him as a redeemer and a deliverer, then you are testifying to his authority to redeem and deliver those from serving men through borrowing. Now you have given them truth that the Lord has the authority to do such a thing. Your praise is full of truth concerning the authority of heaven. That's why if the praise isn't created by the Lord, then it's a lie. But if the praise is created by the Lord, then the truth of the praise itself delivers people and allows them to trust in the authority of heaven to do the same thing for them that you are praising the Lord about. Are you getting it? The Lord creates, when the Lord increases you, he is putting in your mouth how he desires to talk about you. And when he creates the praise, it is the truth concerning what the authority of heaven has authority over. Hence, when people hear your praise, your praise, watch, because what he's, do, what he's doing is something that none else can do. So because you are praising him for him doing it in your life, they truly can see the authority of heaven and now be delivered from the lies that they trust in and set their heart on the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven to prosper them. Somebody say amen. Amen. Come on, let's keep going. Watch this. Watch this. Now, I'm going to get to this. Go through. Go through the gates. So now understand, once again, this is about deliverance. This is about deliverance. And understand the word of the Lord to the remnant in this season is I am with you to deliver you. Understand the word of the Lord to the remnant in this season is I am with you to deliver you. And the Lord says, it is time for you to enter in to the place in Las Vegas, Henderson, where I will redeem you, deliver you, and you to receive from me. Understand this. Hear me carefully, because I'm about to take a bunch of witnesses for this one. This is good. When increase happens in the Lord's timing, the Lord brings you into the place where he will make you fruitful. Are you understanding? When increase happens in the Lord's timing, he brings you into the place where he will make you fruitful. Understand that. When increase happens, listen, in the Lord's timing, he brings you into the place where he will make you fruitful. Watch now. You don't have to bring yourself in. He brings you in. Let me show it to you. Watch this. Understand now. The only reason this is right here in verse number nine is because it's time for the Lord to establish where he can be found. And when it's time for the Lord to, re or and also for him to redeem and deliver. But understand, when the Lord is set to make you, uh, to increase you, when it happens in his time, he brings you into the place where he'll make you fruitful. First place I want to go, I'm going to give you a witness. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Watch this. Watch this. Watch. Because it's important that he bring you in. Why? Because in bringing you in, there's deliverance. Are you hearing me? Watch. In bringing you in, there's deliverance. Understand. In bringing you in, there's deliverance. 
Whenever the Lord increases you in his time, he brings you into the place where he will make you fruitful. Verse number, Deuteronomy 7, verse number 1. Circle the word when. What's that? Time. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whether thou goest to possess it. Now listen to this. Watch. Listen now. Now look at verse 13. And you'll get, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to take you through a bunch of places and I'm going to show it to you. Verse 13 says this. He will love thee. He will bless thee. He will multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of the womb, fruit of thy land, thy corn, thy wine, thy oil, the increase of thy kind of flocks, thy sheep in the land. So now watch now. In the land which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee. And remember, increase is about redemption and deliverance. But it happens in the place that the Lord brings you into. Are you understanding? When it's time for the Lord to increase you, he brings you into the place that he's going to make you fruitful. He brings you in. Let me give you another witness. Watch this. You've heard him. You just didn't pay no attention to him. I could go right here. Why? No, but I'm going to go here. Psalms chapter 1. Psalms chapter 1. Psalms chapter 1. You know it. Watch. You just didn't really pay attention to it. Psalms chapter 1. First word in, in Psalms. I need verse 3, but I'm just going to use one word. Watch this. First word out of verse number 1 is what? Blessed. What is the blessing? The blessing is the increase of the Lord. Let's make sure we understand this. You can't call anything that you prosper by your hand a blessing. That's not a blessing. That's you increasing you. The blessing is the Lord increasing you by his authority. The blessing is the increase of the Lord by his authority. So now listen to what he says. Watch. Listen to David. Listen to David. He says, blessed. Okay. So now increased of the Lord is the man. So now watch. But listen to verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Wait a minute. Planted. Okay. To plant something, you put it in the place that you choose. You put it in the place you choose. The tree doesn't put itself where it wants to grow. The person that is in charge, that wants the tree to grow, that wants it to be fruitful, it places the tree in the place where it wants to be, where it wants it to be fruitful. Those that the Lord increases, he brings them in to the place that he will make them fruitful. That's what David is telling you. He says, the man that the Lord will increase, he will put him in the place. He will put him in the place that he wants him to be fruitful. Let me give you another witness. Watch this. Genesis chapter 1. This is a foundational truth. It ain't changed. It's a foundational truth. Understand this. Watch now. Let me share this with you so you get this real clear. Watch. You know how you be in church and they be asking you for building fund money or they tell you they want to buy some land? Okay, that's them bringing themselves into the place that they want to be fruitful. Understand, watch now, making merchandise of the people. But if you go through the scriptures, when the Lord made the people fruitful, he brought them into the place where he wanted them to be fruitful. Why do you think he says, I will bring you up out of Egypt unto the land of the Amorites, the Hittites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites? Wait a minute. These are the places that I want to make you fruitful. And when it's time, if you go to Deuteronomy chapter 2, when it was time for the people to be increased by God, the Lord says to Moses, he says, today, he said, this day, he says, will I begin to, to put the dread of thee and the fear of thee upon all nations that are under the whole heaven who shall hear report of thee. What was the report that they would hear? Because he says to Moses, arise, pass over the river Arnon. Behold, 
I have given into your hand Sahan, the king of the Amorites, in his land. Begin to possess it. He says, I'm ready to increase you. So because I'm ready, I'm going to bring you into the place that I'm going to make you fruitful. That's how God works. Watch this. It was no burden on the people because the Lord was ready to increase them. And because he was ready to increase them, he brought them into the place where he would make them fruitful. Watch this. If the burden is on the people, then they could never see the authority of the Lord. But if the, if the, if the fruitfulness happens in God's timing, then there's no burden for the people. They get to see the authority of the Lord and their knowledge is in the authority of the Lord to prosper them. When the Lord is set to increase you and it happens in his timing, he brings you into the place where he will make you fruitful. Watch, this is a foundational truth. If it's foundational, that makes it generational. If it's generational, that makes it eternal. Are you understanding? Meaning he will do it forever. Watch. Listen to it. You've heard it. You just didn't pay no attention to it. Verse number six, Genesis chapter two, verse number seven. Listen to this. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Listen to this. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. Listen. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Listen. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow. Wait a minute. The Lord put the man or brought the man into the place where he would make him fruitful. For what purpose? Deliverance and that he may see the authority of the Lord and know what the Lord had authority over. And what he would know is that the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. If you are bringing yourself into the place that you desire to be fruitful, then you are robbing yourself of the knowledge of the authority of heaven. But when the Lord is set to increase you, he brings you in. He brings you into the place where he will make you fruitful. Understand, he brings you into the place that he will make you fruitful for the purpose of delivering you. Are you understanding? Delivering you from serving men through borrowing and give you knowledge of what he has authority over that you may know. That the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world in the day that dwell therein. Last witness, Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 20. Ezekiel chapter 20. Ezekiel chapter 20. Watch this. Verse number 6. Ezekiel 20, verse number 6. Watch this. Listen to this. In that day that I lifted my hand unto them, listen to this, to bring them forth out of the land of Egypt, listen, into a land that I had aspired for them. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He's, he's teaching. He says, listen, I brought you out because there was somewhere that I desired to bring you into to make you fruitful. The only way I'm going to make you fruitful in it is that I bring you into it. Are you understanding? If I don't bring you into it, then you won't see my hands at work. You'll see your hands at work. And if you see your hands at work, it's impossible for you to have knowledge of what my hands have authority over. Watch now. Those that are given land by the Lord, once again, they don't talk about the land. They talk about the Lord. When the Lord increases you, he puts in your mouth how he desires for you to talk about him. Let me help you real quickly here. You discern who the Lord is working in their life through the words that leave their mouth in the name of the Lord. Because those that the Lord has increased, they speak differently about the increase of the Lord. Because the subject of their increase is the Lord, not the increase. 
That's why the Lord had a problem with Hezekiah when he was showing all of his wealth to the king of Babylon, because he wasn't talking to the king of Babylon about the Lord of the increase. He was showing him his increase. And that's the problem the Lord had with Hezekiah. When the Lord increases you, you talk about the Lord of the increase. And when he brings you in, understand his purpose is to give you knowledge of his authority. So it's about deliverance. In bringing you in, he's delivering you from serving men through borrowing. He's giving you redemption and deliverance in bringing you in. And let me make you understand the place that he says it's time for you to enter into. It is a place. This is the place when he says it's time to enter into the place in Las Vegas, Henderson, that I will deliver you that I will redeem you and where you will receive from me. In this place, this is the place where it will rain. Understand, this is the place where it will rain. This is the place where you will receive from the Lord. Please understand, this is the place where the Lord, through his servant, the prophet, through great judgments, will redeem and deliver you. This is the place where the Lord will sit and abide to judge. This is the place where the Lord will call the remnant to. Are you understanding? Go back and I'm going to say it again. This is the place where it will rain. It won't rain any other place, but in this place, this is the place where the rain of heaven will come down. This is the place to receive from the Lord. This is it. This is where we will receive from the Lord. This is the place where the Lord, through his servant, the prophet, will, by great judgments, deliver and redeem. This is the place of deliverance. This is the place where the Lord will call the remnant to. Understand, this is the fulfillment of Joel 2.32. Watch. Watch this. Joel 2.32. Listen now. He says, and it shall come to pass, whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. So now understand, the remnant are going to be a people of deliverance. And it's in this place that he will redeem them and that he will deliver them that they will be a people of deliverance and redemption. And they will understand, praise the Lord for being redeemed and delivered. Come on, let's keep going. I got to go. I got to finish this up. Listen now, watch this. Watch this. Let's go. Watch this. Listen, listen. Listen. He says, listen. Prepare you the way of the people and cast up, cast up the highway. Now understand, this is good. The Lord is not bringing you in. He wants you to understand his purpose for bringing you in. He's, he's bringing you in with a commandment and an understanding. His purpose for bringing you in is this is the place where the people will be taught the ways of the Lord. Understand, they will be taught the ways of the Lord by the Lord. Understand, that's the purpose for bringing you in other than, watch this. Yes, he's bringing you in to deliver you. He's bringing you in to redeem you, but he's also bringing you into this place to be taught the ways of the Lord and to be taught by the Lord. This is the fulfillment of two other scriptures. Let me show them to you. First place is uh, Isaiah 54, Isaiah 54. Understand, prepare you the way of the people, cast up, cast up the highway. He needs you to understand his purpose. Once, remember what I told you this. This is your word for this season, that I am with you to deliver you. And in teaching you, he will deliver you from the lies, from the captivity of the lies that you trust in that hold you in bondage. Understand, he's bringing you in to teach you his ways and to be taught by the Lord. Are you hearing me? Watch this. This is the fulfillment of these two scriptures. First place is Isaiah 54 and 13. Listen to what it says. 
All thy children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of thy children. Understand, he's bringing you in to be taught by the Lord and to be taught the ways of the Lord. And the teaching is for the purpose of deliverance. Understand this. Everything that the Lord is doing is for the purpose of deliverance. Remember at the top what I said. I said the Lord has committed and determined to establish his presence in the earth through deliverance. And understand the teaching is purpose to deliver the people from the captivity. Remember now, when they came out of Egypt, they may have been out of captivity, but they were held captive by the lies in God that they trusted in to prosper themselves. So therefore, the Lord delivered them from the captivity of the lies that they trusted in through teaching them his ways of doing things. There was deliverance in the teaching. Are you hearing me? Last place. We already talked about these scriptures. Micah chapter 4. Micah chapter 4. Micah chapter 4. Micah chapter 4. Listen now. Watch this. Listen, it says. One through three. But in the last days, it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established, <coughs> excuse me, in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. Here it is. People shall flow unto it. And many nations shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. Here it is. And he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for the law shall go forth of Zion. That's judgment and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So now understand his purpose for bringing you in is to teach you his ways and to you be taught by the Lord that in the teaching you may be delivered. Last point. I'm done right here. Listen to this. He says, gather out the stones and lift up a standard for the people. Understand the pur his purpose for bringing you in. Listen to this. It's good. Understand this. Watch. Lift up mean cause to see. Understand. The Lord says, I don't want the people to see your teaching. I need them to see your increase that they may know the truth about the blessing of the Lord. This is what it's all about. I don't need them to see your teaching. I need them to see your increase that they may know the truth about the blessing of the Lord. Here it is. And I need you to hear this. When increase happens in the Lord's timing, hear it, listen. The Lord is looking for people to call you the blessed of the Lord. Listen to this, watch. Listen to the term, the blessed of the Lord. What is greater than the increase is the authority that increased you. So the authority that increased you allows people to call you the blessed of the Lord. They don't talk about your increase. They talk about the Lord of your increase. And I'm bringing you into this place to increase you so that people will see your increase and call you the blessed of the Lord, that you may lift up a standard. Are you listening to me? That you may lift up a standard as to what it looks, truly looks like to be blessed of the Lord. Because to call you the blessed of the Lord means you see the authority of heaven in the increase of the people that have been increased by the Lord. Are you hearing me? You cannot call someone blessed of the Lord if you do not see the authority of the Lord in their increase. Let me, let me, let me, let me just show it to you. Watch this. Let me show it to you. Let me show it to you. First place I want to go. I'm, I'm right here. We're right here. Let's just go backwards. Isaiah 61. Watch, watch, watch. The standard, the standard is this, is that when the Lord increases you, 
the people call you blessed of the Lord because they see the Lord in your increase. They see the authority of the Lord in your increase. Watch this. Watch, watch. Isaiah 61, verse number nine. Watch. And their seed shall be known, wait a minute, among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. Listen, all that see them shall, wait, wait, all that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. All that see them shall acknowledge that they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. They can see the authority of the Lord in their increase. And according to seeing that authority, they call them the blessed of the Lord. If you do not see the authority of heaven in the increase, you cannot call it the blessing of the Lord. And watch this so you don't get it mistaken. Understand, when men bring you your increase, that's wondrous. That's marvelous. Are you understanding? When the Lord gives you your land by his authority, that's marvelous. That's wondrous. How do you see the Lord in the increase? It's wondrous. It's marvelous. Listen to what the scripture says. It says that, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord, your God that has dealt wondrously with you. Well, how do I know for sure if I see the authority of heaven at work in the life of a people, I will see wondrous increase. And for God to command men to bring in your increase is wondrous. Therefore, it's in seeing the authority of the Lord at work in the lives of the people. Do you call them the blessed of the Lord because you see the authority of heaven working on their behalf to prosper them? That is the standard of the blessing of the Lord. I got one more place. I got one more place. Watch this. I got two more places. Then I'm going to be done. I got two more places. Then I'm going to be done. Watch. Genesis 26, Genesis 26. And then I'm gonna go to Micah chapter three because you know that one, but we're gonna get good in that one. Then we're gonna be done. Genesis 26, watch, watch. Let me ask you a question. I'm, I'm gonna say this and I want you to hear me when I say this to you. Watch now, why is it that we give no weight to the authority of heaven, but we give weight to the authority of men? Understand. If you don't see the authority of heaven in it, you cannot call it the blessing of the Lord. Watch, watch. Listen to this. Listen to this. Verse 28, Jesus 26, 28, 29. Listen. And they said, we saw certainly that the Lord was with thee. And we said, let there be now an oath betwixt us, even between us and thee. And let us make a covenant with thee that thou would do us no hurt as we have not touched thee and as we've done unto thee nothing but good and has sent thee away in peace. Thou art now the blessed of the Lord. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? When the Lord increases you, his, when it happens in his time, he is increasing you that people may call you the blessed of the Lord. He doesn't want them talking about your increase he needs them talking about the Lord of your increase. He's bringing the remnant into this place that he may raise up a standard of what it looks like, truly looks like when the Lord increases you. For when the Lord increases you, people call you the blessed of the Lord because they see the authority of the Lord in your increase. If they don't see the authority of the Lord in your increase, they cannot say it is the blessing of the Lord. The authority of heaven must be present that you may be called the blessed of the Lord and by his hand, he causes you to walk in the honor of holiness. Last place, I'm gonna be done right here. Malachi chapter three, watch now, watch. Watch now, watch, watch. Hallelujah. This is good. Hallelujah. Watch, watch, watch. 
Malachi chapter 3, you know it. But we're just going to get some real good understanding. Watch this. Verse 10. Listen now. You know it. Bring you all the time to the storehouse. There may be meat in my house. Prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts. If I will not open up you the windows of heaven and empty you out a blessing, right? That you shall not have room enough to receive it. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. He shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. Now listen now. Listen. I will pour you out a blessing. I will. My authority is present in your increase. Listen to verse 12. All nations shall call you blessed. Wait, that's it. That's the standard of the blessing of the Lord. The standard is the authority of heaven must be seen in your increase. And when it is seen in your increase, all men call you the blessed of the Lord. What causes them to call you the blessed of the Lord is that they see the authority of heaven in your increase and they identify you according to seeing the authority of heaven in your increase. The blessed of the Lord is those that you see the authority of heaven working on their behalf to prosper them. The Lord says to the remnant, I'm bringing you in here that you may raise up a standard for what it truly looks like to what the, the blessing of the Lord truly looks like that all may know what the blessing of the Lord looks like. And for so understand that, understand he's bringing you in for the, to raise up a standard. And the standard is what it looks like to truly be blessed by the Lord. To truly be blessed by the Lord is for the Lord to increase you and cause people through seeing the authority of heaven at work in your life, call you the blessed of the Lord. Please understand that. Watch. You don't talk about your increase. The people tell you about the Lord of your increase. Because when the Lord increases you and them seeing him in it, he causes you to walk in the honor of being called the blessed of the Lord. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Go back over it. Listen to it. But I'm going to say this again to the remnant. Understand, this is the season that the Lord is with you to deliver you. And understand, this is the time to enter in to the place in Las Vegas, Henderson, where the Lord will redeem you, deliver you, and cause you to receive from him. Understand, this is the season that the Lord is with you to deliver you. Somebody say amen. Amen. Come on, let us pray. God, we thank you for your word. We glorify you. Sure that with you, nothing is impossible. God, we thank you for your timing and your ways. We give you glory that our hearts are set on the ways of the kingdom of heaven. And as your people receive this word, God, allow them to gain an understanding of your everlasting, exceeding great authority. We give you honor and praise right now. In the resurrected name of your Christ, we pray. And everybody said, amen. God bless you. Have a good night.